guys, in my mind, there's two types of naming in organic chemistry. There's common naming, which we're talking about today in this video, and then there's something called IUPAC systematic naming. And that's kind of the type of naming you do when there's just a massive molecule or just a, a bigger molecule than you can't handle with common naming, and you, you have some rules and stuff like that to help you handle that situation. However, we're talking about common naming today. So really, what common naming is, is molecules on a smaller scale, or com molecules that come up just a lot, there's easy ways to talk about them and kind of give them names, as opposed to going through the rules and jumping through all the hoops of systematic naming. And as it usually is in organic chemistry, instead of me just talking about it, it's better if I just show you. Okay, so really the, one, the molecules we're going to, the, at least the carbon chains we're going to handle, are methane, ethane, propane, and butane. Okay, so let's talk about methane, and this is going to be a nice way to kind of ease into common naming. Okay, so really the way you have to, when common naming is applicable, is when you have something attached to a carbon chain. So let's just say instead of, you know, four hydrogens attached to this carbon, I have CH3 and a chlorine attached to this carbon, right? So all the hydrogens would be around here, so we have CH3, Cl. So how do we refer to this? What do we say? The easiest way is that, okay, so the parent chain is methane, right? So here's how you handle this. Instead of saying methane, you kind of drop the A-N-E ending. You would say meth, Y-L, methyl, and then a space, and then kind of whatever you have, plus, if it's a halogen, a halogen being, uh, you know, one of the like chlorine, iodine, bromine, you kind of drop that, uh, you add an I-D ending. So this would be methyl chloride. And it's as simple as that, right? So if I gave you guys CH3F, right? That would be methyl fluoride, right? So you just add that IDE ending, you make sure your parent chain, you drop the A-N-E ending and you add Y-L, and it's as simple as that, right? So let me just do one more with methane and then we'll keep pushing forward onto a longer carbon chain. So if I gave you CH3OH, that would be methyl, and then it's kind of weird, no IDE ending here, this would be methyl, and then the name of the functional group, methyl alcohol, right? Because it's not a halogen. Also, kind of on, along that same train of thought, if I gave you CH3 and H2, that would be methyl amine, right? Kind of like that example I gave you guys during the functional group video, methyl amine, right? So that's pretty much all there is to it. So let's go look at ethane. There's going to be a little twist at the end, but it doesn't get that difficult, I promise. So, if we had Fa, right, just like that, and from this carbon right here, if I draw a bond to chlorine, right, I'm not adding an extra carbon, I'm just drawing a line to chlorine. This would be ethyl, right, because it's not ethane, but eth, and then you drop the A and E ending, add the YL, ethyl chloride. Right? Not hard. Right here, this would be ethyl, you guessed it, ethyl bromide. All right, now, what if I gave you this? This would be ethyl alcohol. And if I gave you this, ethyl amine, not hard. All right, so now we tackled two carbons. Let's try three. Here's where things get a, there's a little twist, but nothing you can't handle. Okay, so before, before when we had methane and ethane, there were only two places to attach stuff, right? Because there was only one carbon here. And on ethane, right, it didn't matter if I attached something here or here, it was always the same molecule no matter what. These two carbons are what we call equivalent, right? However, a little bit different with propane. I can attach something here or here. These two are equivalent positions, right? Doesn't matter if I put something on this end or this end, it's still terminal. However, I can also attach something right there, and that would make the structure different. Okay, so let's see how we kind of handle this in a common naming fashion. If I were to add something like this, right, we still have one, two, three carbons and a chlorine, this would be propyl chloride. 
right? And if I did something like this, propyl bromide. If I did something like this, propyl alcohol. Same thing as we've done with the last two structures. However, it gets a little different when we attach it to the middle position. We need to kind of use a different common name to say, hey, it's actually not, so this is a propane chain. However, we're not attached on the terminal carbon. We're in the middle carbon. So if I were to give you something like this, it wouldn't be propyl chloride. This is the iso position. So we would call it, you know, asterisk, this would be called isopropyl chloride. And all this iso prefix does is just an indicator to whoever's reading this name to say, oh, okay, it's a three carbon chain, but this chlorine isn't on a terminal carbon, it's in the middle carbon, it's on the iso position. So if I were to give you something like this, and I think this might ring a bell because you probably bought this a time or two in your life, especially for you ladies out there, this would be isopropyl alcohol, right? You can definitely find that in Rite Aid or Walgreens or wherever, whatever drugstore you're near. So that's the only kind of twist with propane is that, you know, we have these two terminal positions that are equivalent, but we also have the iso position in the middle. Okay, let's tackle butane and then we are done with common naming. Okay, so kind of we can play a similar game with butane. So let's start off with a straight chain. So if I were, so we can see that these two positions are equivalent, and can you see that these two positions in the middle are also the same? So let's start off with these two. If I were to draw this, this would be butyl bromide, right? Drop the A and E ending on butane, add the YL. If it's a halogen like we have here, add that IDE ending, butyl bromide. We could have butyl chloride, we could have butyl iodide, butyl fluoride, you get the idea. We could also have something like this, butyl alcohol or butyl amine, the list goes on and on. However, what happens when we have this, right? This time we're not using that ISO ending. It's actually going to come into play in a few minutes. However, we have a special name for this. And before I tell you this, we need to kind of break aside to do something really quickly. So if we're going to look at this structure right here, there's some terminology I need to go over really fast. So if you have a carbon that's attached to one carbon, that's said to be called a primary carbon, right? If you're a carbon, you're attached to two carbons, you're said to be secondary. Right? That's the uh, abbreviation with the number and the degree symbol. Here's the spelling. If you were attached to three carbons, one, two, three, you would be tertiary. And although we don't use this too much, if you were attached to four carbons, that would be four and a degree symbol. And that's actually called quaternary. The reason I bring this up is because over here we have a secondary carbon. And the way we name attachments on these two positions with just with butane is you say sec hyphen and then butyl bromide. So nothing changes, right? We're still using the butyl bromide, but when you say sec, whoever's reading the name says, oh, okay, it's, a, it's butyl bromide, but the bromine is on the secondary carbon in butane, right? So if we had something like this, this would be sec butyl alcohol. So just a little twist, nothing you guys can't handle. Okay, here's kind of the last little, the last little uh, unexpected surprise and then we're done with common naming. So we have butane, right? We kind of handle the two, the two unique positions, right? This guy here and this guy here because we know this is equivalent to this and this terminal position is equivalent to this terminal position over here. However, there's still a different way for us to arrange four atoms. What if I drew butane like this? Right? One, two, three, four. It's like if I just took this branch right here and kind of moved him over here. This parent structure is called isobutane, and this parent structure is butane. So basically, we need to figure out how can we name 
this structure because there's a couple of different new unique positions on it, right? Can't you agree that this terminal carbon is equivalent to this terminal carbon and this terminal carbon is equivalent to that terminal carbon, right? It wouldn't matter if I put a bromine here or here or there, it would all be the same structure. However, if you see this tertiary carbon right here, that's different from all these terminal positions, right? These terminal primary positions, right? So we kind of need to figure out what the naming kind of scenario is. So let's give it a whirl. If I were to just attach a bromine over here, which is the same as if I attached it here or there, right? These are all equivalent. We would name this like so, isobutyl, right? Because this is isobutane. So we have to drop that A in the ending and we add YL, isobutyl bromide, right? And if this was a fluorine, that would be isobutyl fluoride. And if that was an OH, that would be isobutyl alcohol. And if that was an NH2, isobutyl amine, just like we had done before. However, the game changes a little bit when I would attach anything to the tertiary position, right, in the middle. So how do we handle that? We actually don't even use the iso prefix anymore. Because this is a tertiary carbon, much like we did with the secondary carbon up here, we kind of hint at that. So the name is actually tert, or T for short, tert butyl bromide. And in the same sense, if we were going to use an OH, this would be tert or T butyl alcohol. Now, you might be sitting there thinking, like, Joe, why did you, we totally ditch the iso prefix? Like, that, that is a total indicator that we have this type of parent structure versus butane. And here's the reason why it doesn't matter. We only have a tertiary carbon with isobutane, right? There's no tertiary carbon here. It's primary, secondary, secondary, primary. Right here, it's primary, 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 tertiary. So just make sure you know that you have to take your parent structure, you have to drop the A and E ending for alkanes, and then add YL, right? Methyl, ethyl, propyl, butyl, isobutyl. Then, remember, there's always like some edge cases, right? So here, right, this would be propyl. Here we have isopropyl. Here we have butyl. Here we have secbutyl. Here we have isobutyl. And here we have tert or t-butyl. Okay. So common naming is really not that bad, I promise. I mean, as you just saw, we hit it hard in the worksheet. So go ahead and attack that first alkane worksheet. It deals with functional groups and a whole bunch of this. In the next video, we're going to kind of ramp up our naming toolbox beyond common naming. You know, when things get bigger and there's more stuff attached, that's called systematic naming. And I promise the hardest part about it might just be using the alphabet. And you'll see what I mean.